Welcome to today's webinar titled How Arion Technologies Generates Aerodynamic Databases with Hydra, a framework in Python using Cart3D, GoCart, and TechPlot. Matt is going to give us a product demonstration. Uh, we're going to go over a uh, mock and alpha uh, angle of attack lattice, uh, and he has a couple of other uh, interesting examples to show us today as well. Let's get to the part that I think everybody is, is really interested in, which is uh, how we work with, with TechPlot specifically chorus. The Hydra post process command allows, uh, provides the ability or capability to, to work directly with chorus. It by default provides, Hydra provides a set of macros to generate residual force moment history plots. And basically what these are are, are those quantities, residual force of moment, uh, as a function of the multigrid cycle used by Flowcart. We use these constantly in, in, in the field ultimately to assess or to look at the variation of these particular quantities as a function of the multigrid cycle, getting, trying to again assess convergence of the solver. Users can also, though, define graphics, custom graphics to be generated besides the default ones that are provided by simply dropping in a layout file to, into the project directory and the post-process command will clone that layout file all over uh, the database and it will collect the, the graphics associated with that. It will also scrub the integrated quantities that are provided in the loadcc.dat file and pull them all back into Chorus, which it automatically launches at the end of that process. Let's go through and show how this physically works. I'm going to run this Hydra command on a pre-computed experiment that I'm calling DOE right now. The reason why I'm doing this on a slightly different experiment is because the mesh resolution associated with this experiment is much greater, so the, the quality of the visualization products are going to be superior. This is also done over a larger number of cases. Like I said earlier, I'm running this on a, on a small virtual machine on my laptop right now. So I, I don't really expect that I can get a lot of throughput. I can handle a large number of cases on a, on a setup like this. Um, I will say that I, I, uh, I have a 24 core uh, desktop machine um, sitting on my, uh, on my, you know, on my desk and, uh, and, and I rarely wait a significant amount of time to do, uh, to do you know, three or four hundred, do the generation of three or four hundred graphics uh, that comprise uh, some of the databases that, uh, that, I'm, that I'm working with here. So this is going to take a little time. As you see, there's a it's kind of a status menu that's displayed uh, as, as Hydra is propagating the different uh, tech lot layout files throughout the throughout the the extent of the, uh, the database and then automatically course pops up and uh, this is just the default screen that one walks into in course so um, I'm going to click on the matrix view of the uh, of uh, the images that were produced uh, by this and the first thing you see are the force moment and residual uh, plots that I discussed that Hydra generates by default. Um, one can come down here and click on, um, you know, the force plot is here, the moment plot is here, the residual plot is here. Um, you can zoom in and scroll through this database and start comparing convergence histories graphically between different cases that were computed in the database. And this is extremely powerful. It's more powerful than the, than the statistics that I showed earlier in the sense of giving the, the, uh, the operator, the, the creator of the, the database an idea of exactly uh, physically what's happening with the, the convergence of his solvers over a multitude of different cases. And you're doing it very, very quickly. Um, like I said, um, Hydra also provides for the support of custom layouts. And so if one were to, I bet I didn't show it, I left a layout file in the project directory. This is something that I laid out a little bit earlier. I call it surfacecp.lay, and it shows contours of pressure coefficient of the vehicle. And I just put that into the project directory, and when I ran the post-process command, Hydra automatically propagated that layout file and generated PNGs for every case in this, in this database and then automatically gathered those PNGs back into, into Chorus, and this is exactly what you're seeing right now. The columns are 
uh, at uh, constant Mach number. The rows are a constant angle of attack. And again, you can quickly and easily peruse all of your solutions using the chorus tool. Um, again, and try to assess the quality of your grid, how well you're capturing shock structures, and other flow features ultimately that you hope to be exhibited in the results. So terribly neat, quick. Um, Hydra also uh, scrubs all of a lot, such that most of the functionals that are reported in the loadcc.dat file. Um, so one could come up to the 3D scatter plot here and plot, let's say, lift coefficient as a function of Mach number and angle of attack. Um, come in here as well, quickly and easily, to find uh, a surrogate model to be fit through the data, and then superimpose that on the discrete data, and that's here. So um, pretty easy and neat. Uh, to <laughs> to define a response service with uh, with a minimal amount of time associated with them. Um, another net great feature is to come in here as well and, and to start looking at line plots. Um, I'm going to plot lift coefficient again as a function of angle of attack, and I'd like to group the data uh, by Mach number. Um, and basically, this, this shows me my lift curve slopes at various Mach numbers uh, for this vehicle. Again, um, I did it uh, amazingly quickly uh, using a TechBot course. 